keep reading here in verse number 5. The Bible reads, And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. This is Rahab continuing to tell the messengers, hey, you know, these guys, they left. You, if, you, if you leave right now, you could, maybe you could catch up with them and you could get them. And uh, verse number six says, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. So they lock up the city. These guys went to look for them. They realize, oh, they're not here. Or they think they're not there. So they're going on lockdown. They shut the gates of the city right as soon as those guys go out to try to find them, to try to catch them and not let them to get back to the children of Israel. Verse number eight. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. So they stay up there. They stay quiet, you know, after these guys leave. And then Rahab finally goes back up there to meet with them. And this is really interesting. I'm going to spend a lot of time just kind of on this point here in verses 9 through 11. It says, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. So she's saying, I know who you guys are. I know where you're from. We've heard about the battles that were done. We heard that how the Lord was with you and how you defeated these two kings and you utterly destroyed them. Verse number 11, And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And that's the telling part. This is, we see, we see now and understand the reason why did Rahab hide these, these spies? Why did she hide them? It's because she heard what happened and she came to realization and she believed God, the Lord is God. That that is, that he's the Lord. He is God. He's the God in heaven and in earth. And, and that was enough for her to understand whatever it is that she had heard, you know, uh, whatever amount of truth that she heard about the Lord, she realized that he's God and she, re and she didn't want to be fighting against God. So she's helping out the messengers of the Lord. She's helping out these spies because she's trusting now in the Lord. And I believe this, is this whole um, story that we have here is a picture of salvation. She's obviously physically being saved from destruction when the children of Israel come in and they destroy Jericho. But the whole passage gives us a picture of salvation. Keep your finger here and turn, if you would, to Matthew chapter 21, because this is, this is very interesting. What, uh, you know, Rahab, of course, is a harlot. But she had faith, and that's what that's ultimately what mattered, and that's what saved her. You know, she she wasn't the most upstanding citizen of Jericho that was spared from destruction. She was probably of the lowest of the people. But when she heard the truth, when she heard about the Lord, she accepted it, she received it. And this is very similar to what Jesus was talking about when he was dealing with the Pharisees, because the Pharisees were hearing the truth. They're hearing the truth from the Son of God, and they weren't receiving it. But they were giving him a hard time because he went and he spake to the publicans and the harlots, and he, and he spake to the lowest of the people, you know, the people who these Pharisees and their long garments and their robes and they don't even want these people to touch them you remember one of the pharisees was like if this guy was a prophet he'd know what type of person is touching him like and even wouldn't let her let her touch his garment because they have this wicked just puffed up type of an attitude how holy and righteous and great they are and how despicable everybody else is that was the attitude of the Pharisees. That was a Pharisaical attitude. 